Hello everyone and welcome to part two of studying the Asaro head. So today I have the head model app and the Ibis Paint X app up. So in my last video we were only focusing on the proportions as well as the placement of facial features. However, today we're going to be focusing on the actual proportions of the head. So we're going to go a little above and beyond where, the, where just the face goes, but try to put it on a head. And this is just general proportion. So we're gonna make a basic, basic, basic proportion chart. And then once we know the basic rules, we can stylize it and go from there. But for now, we need to learn the rules before we break them like an artist. Either in this video or in another video, we're going to talk about moving head angles. So let's break it down. So the first thing we wanna do is study the sorrow head. So I'm just gonna take a screenshot. We just want the head. I was thinking of doing a different technique for this one in order to learn the proportions of the head. So what we're going to do is we're first going to trace the outline of the head straight on top, and then we're going to try to draw it on our own. But for now, we all know this shape. We've seen this shape. Now let's study the rest of the head. Let's do the whole length of the head. So we have this is the top of the head, and this is the bottom of the head. Ah, so the eye line is about the middle of the head. Now here's the thing, when we're talking about the head, it's easy to get confused between the top of the forehead and the actual top of the head. So let's keep this in mind. When it comes to facial proportions, the actual top of the head, the eye line is exact, is almost exactly midway. What's midway from the chin to the eyes? So let's take a look here. Aha, another correlation. We have the bottom of the nose and the bottom of the chin are almost exactly halfway, see? So from here, we can see that the forehead is pretty much completely empty. We don't need to worry about any extra proportions from there. So the jawline is almost half. I bet we can take it further and say that it is actually half because it's only like off by like a really small margin. So right now we have the basic proportions of the head. I can't be the only one noticing this here, but if you notice, the top of the eye line as well as the bottom of the nose line is where the ear lines. Okay, so now that we've kind of learned the proportions of the head, let's further focus on more planes of the face. So first off, we have the cheekbones. We have this cheekbone right here, we have this cheekbone right here, and it slightly comes out just like that from the bottom of the eye line. So maybe it's better off that the eyes are pentagons so that way we can follow this line right here. So something that I noticed in my independent studies is that the cheekbones are very important. So notice that the cheekbones are the vertices of, of multiple lines. We got one, two, three, four, five. Five lines meeting up at this vertices right here and this one right here, making the cheekbones very important, almost as important as the midline of the eyes. Well, what can we tell? Well, from this point right here, this point right here, the nose matches up here. And if it were to match up here, what do we have? We have the cheek planes. Now, why are the cheek planes important? Because the light on the upper and lower cheek planes are very different from each other by like a few, like a few values. Bear with me, it'll make sense. So the cheek plane, as well as the top of the nose, as well as the forehead are the lightest values. We have the inner concave faces of the eye cavities, which are the darkest values. And around the middle values are the cheek plane here, the cheek plane here. Would, th would, th would this be considered as dark as this? I don't know. Yep, they're equally dark. So the bottom of the chin here, as well as the eye cavities right here are the darkest values, making the different planes of the face a lot more easy to understand. So what other planes can we go from the quintessential cheekbones? Well, from here, we can go from up here to here and here to here, and that is around the midline of the chin. From here, it's also apparent where the jawline kind of falls. We have the bottom of the ear, just like here, from here to here, and then from the bottom of the eye line right here, that's where we can see where the ears fall. So I'm just, I'm just studying the general geometry of the face. So from what I can see, chin is more square than just a, a U shape. So it's like a wide, it's another wide trapezoid. <laughs> the trapezoids are following me everywhere. We got another, what? You see this, right? From this point right here, 
to this point right here, what have we got? We got the top of the chin, boys. No way. If we know where the top of the chin is. So let's pretend we did not know this line right here. We don't know where, where this angle falls. So from the bottom of the jaw, and this bottom of the jaw, if we were to connect them together, that's the top of the chin. And what else can we do? We can follow from the nose line right here. Bam, Quablam! We got all this information here. Look at this. Okay, okay, let me back it up a little bit. So let's say we didn't know this information. We didn't know this information before, so we're trying to figure out what the angle of the jaw and what the angle of the chin is. So we're going from the eyes. We know that the eye line is halfway between the chin here, the bottom chin here, as well as the top of the head. Now, let's follow the edges of the nose planes to the chin. Follow the edge of the nose planes to the chin, got it? So we're just studying where things are relative so we can get a further understanding of where everything falls, okay? The jaw could be anywhere. It could be anywhere. It could be up here, it could be down here, the jaw could be out here, doesn't matter. But what matters is that the distance between both jaw vertices, right, right here, and right here, are the same. Now, if we were to follow the vertices of the cheekbone down, we got one cheekbone, we got two cheekbones. They're basically the same angle. Then from this point to the chin, bada bing and bada boom. From this point to this point, we know where the top of the chin is. When we know where the top of the chin is, we know where the mouth basically goes, which is around right here, it's in the middle. I cracked the code, boys. We did it. We unlocked Optimus Prime. We did it. Is that where the story ends, though? This is part one. Stay tuned for part two.